Well, hello all. I don't know if you've ever been shopping or somewhere and you parked your car and you come back and where you expect to find your car, there's no car. There's, you just wonder now, did I forget? Is dementia setting in? And then it turns out your car's been stolen. It's an awful feeling because you, it takes a while to register that it's not actually you. You've forgotten where you parked. So I thought today I would build a little circuit with a single red flashing LED. So what we've got here is a bank of AA batteries, four of them equals six volts. And I've, to make it flash, I've chosen a PIC 12F1501 uh, microcomputer. They cost where I live one and a half dollars or 30 rand and then an, a red LED and a this is a 200 ohm resistor to make sure you don't burn out the the resistor now you can place this in your car and obviously this is just the rough um, setup but you could have this LED just with a long lead and you could set it up nicely so it sits on your dashboard and flashes all night to chase away those pesky car thieves. So, um, what I did was I chose the cheapest pick that's only got um, eight pins because this is the simplest circuit. So it's going to not cost too much and maybe it could save you the price of a car being stolen and what I did was I use a MP lab and a picket three um, programmer so let me just show you what the programmer looks like that I use to program pick computers so this is what the picket three looks like and it's got five or sometimes six wires and you go onto the data sheet and you've got the VSS, which is your ground lead. You've got your VDD, which is your, um, which is your uh, six volt lead. You've got your clock lead. I've just labeled them all. You've got your data lead and you've got your M clear lead. And if you go to the data sheet, it will tell you which which pin of the eight you must plug all five of these into so I've got this little breadboard and then I just plug each of these five wires into the corresponding pins and then you download MP lab which I already have and then you plug it into the USB port of your computer and then you just program it now, what happened is the person that I'm making this for, I drive a motorbike, I don't have a car, so you can't exactly have one of these on your motorbike. The person I was making this for has a car, doesn't want to get his car stolen, but he wants it to flash a bit faster. So I'm going to, I'll show you the program that I use on MP Lab, and I'm just going to speed up. And we timed it, he thinks he wants it to flash um, 24 times in 10 seconds, which I believe is 0.4 of a second. So we must make the flash, the on periods uh, shorter, and we must make the period between flashes also long. So the whole period must be, I think it's 0.4 seconds if you divide. Um, so yeah, 10 upon 24, and that should be 0.4. So we'll just check the maths, and then I'll just show you how some, well, nothing is simple on a picket. Frankly, I recommend using an Arduino Uno or using a Pi Pico or anything but a Picket. But for years, I used Picket and programmed using using MP Lab. But it's for the the real clever people, not for the dumbos like me. So um, I I always, at a last resort, use the this cheap Pic uh, microprocessor because the um, the Arduino Uno and the Pi um, Pico, they cost about, they cost, cost a, quite a bit more. So, 
use whatever's cheapest and so let's show you how we just uh, did it on the computer how we programmed it vss must go here that's the negative this has got an external power supply in this battery. Then VDD, which I've labeled these. So VDD, which is the positive, goes into, I believe it's pin number one, VSS pin number eight. The data one is pin number seven. So that says DAT or data. That goes to pin number seven, the second last pin. Um, then the clock pin goes to pin number six. So, whoops, this is so old. That has fallen off the label, pin number six. And then M clear goes to pin number four. So that goes to pin number four. And I've set it up so that it uses an external source of voltage it looks a little bit messy but here you can see i've got my pipe picker far prefer it arduino uno far prefer it and here's my pick programmer that this all is connected to so to program it i find the usb port on my computer which is over here and i plug it in So here I am in MP Lab IDE something developmental environment. You've got to define your crystal frequency, include xc.h. Frankly, this is a lot of C. I don't um, speak C all that, but that's something you've got to, it's some library you've got to include. Then you've got to set all these settings clock out, watchdog timer. Uh, power something or other brownout detection M clear F FOSC I it's been a while since I've done these so I forget them but anyway you can copy them from some working program or someone else's program these are all the settings this is what makes programming a pick so difficult is because the Pi Pico and the um, Arduino do all these settings for you okay then you've got registers, tri-state A, you've got to set what it is, is it in or out, Ansel A, you set to naught, all pins are digital, you've got to do all this, but if you're a bright little beaver, you can easily do this sort of stuff, enable weak pull-ups on, uh, on our bits, and there's a Pull up on register A3, enable weak pull ups. And actually, all of that you just copy from someone else's program or some working program. Then you've got to set the OSCON bits. I think this is the time and the internal clock settings. Here is actually the only two lines. And this is here are the eight. Uh, pins of your pick. You switch them all to ones, that means they're on. Leave it on for milliseconds 100, which is 0.1 of a second. Then put all the LEDs, uh, put all the pins to zero, which means all LEDs. If you had LEDs on each pin, they'd all go off. I've only got one pin that I'm using, and then delay that for 300 seconds. Uh, then you go here, and you program it and you'll see stuff happening here that tells you that 
you're hopefully going to be successful. Watch all this is, if it all tells you that it's successful, then you know that it's all working nicely. And I can see already that the LED is flashing a lot faster, so it's actually done what it's supposed to do. I'll show you the LED flashing now. So there, we've now programmed it. And yeah, let's show you the LED flashing faster now, which is what our client wanted. You see the LED flashing a lot, lot faster. And that's what he wanted to make it seem like a more urgent and busy flashing of the LED. I think it's less realistic, but I'm not the client. So there is our program working. So here is our PIC 12F1501. Pins 1 to 4, 5 to 8. The VSS is pin number 8. It goes to the negative side of the battery box. There are four AA batteries. And then the positive side goes to the VDD, which is pin number 1. The only other components you have coming from the negative side of the battery connecting to that and to pin number 8 is a wire that goes around to a 200 ohm resistor in series with a red LED connected to the second pin or register A5 of this particular PIC 12F1501. And there's the very simple circuit. And so that's how we set it up. Good luck making it.